The stranded marines are still holding their own against the Tyranid Horde, but their librarian leader has still yet to hit the battlefield. With backup badly needed, let's get this librarian in Terminator armor ready for the battlefield. I wanted to add something extra to the librarian, something that shows that he's in the middle of a fight against the Tyranids. So I took two of the rippers from the ripper swarms that were in the Leviathan box, and I want one on the base and have it look like he's catching the other one. With no battle damage on this guy, I went straight in with the base spray of McCraig Blue over a grey primer. I wanted to paint the yellow wires now because it's going to take a couple of tin layers to get a solid Avalon Sunset colour down. I then went with Covers Black to paint parts of the gun. I then based the other wires with my fist on right. To finish the gun, I used Lead Belcher and I also used it on parts of his axe. For the chest skull and the parchment, I used Zandri Dust to get a solid colour down. For the gold parts, I usually use Retributor Armour, but I wanted the gold to be much brighter this time, so I used Liberator Gold instead. For the leather, I accidentally started using Rhinox Hide instead of Doombull, but I'll fix that later on. The wax on the purity seals were painted with my fist on red. On his left shoulder pad, I used Dawnstone to paint the symbol. Before going into the shading, I fixed up the leather parts with the intended colour of Doombull Brown. With all the base cuts down and tidying up sorted, I started to prepare for the shading. First up was Nullin Oil for the black and silver parts, but also for the symbol on the left shoulder pad. And it was time to recess shade the blue armour. I carefully add thin lines of Nullin Oil just into the recesses, and it takes a little time to do this, but it means there's less cleanup later on if you just decide to spread it all over. For the parchment, skull and any red parts, I shade them with Skeleton Horde. The gold parts were then shaded with Agrax or Shade. I'm still unsure about the yellow because I've never painted it a whole lot, but I wanted it to be a little brighter, so I gave it an almost glaze of Uriel yellow mixed with some lamin medium. I had almost forgot that he had a face, so I needed to be painted, so I based it with flayed one flesh. Coming back to the yellow, and I think a light shade of Seraphim Sepia is the right choice to slightly darken it down. At this point I should have been happy with the yellow, but for some reason I thought it needed another layer of Uriel yellow. It's fine on the wires, but I think it was one too many layers on the shoulder pad. With the shades finished, it was now time to highlight the black part of the gun and the right shoulder pad symbol with Dawnstone, and the silver parts with Stormhose Silver. The bone and parchment was highlighted with Zandri Dust. To brighten the gold back up, I used Stormhole Silver. The brown leather parts were then brought back up with Scrag Brown. I had forgotten about the red wires and the axe handles, so I shed them with Caribou Crimson. I tried to keep faces as simple as possible, because I tend to overdo it, and I'm never happy with the results. So to keep it simple, I finished the face off with a shade of Gullum and Flesh. I wish I had thought about this when I was doing the yellow. I then highlight the red handle with Evil Sun Scarlet. Most of the model is finished, but there are two important parts that I've left until the end. The armor's magic glow and his axe. I start with the axe, and I've done some learning on power weapons before, and while it seems like it's hard to do, it's more about being prepared and willing to take your time at it. I wanted it to be bright blue, just like the box art, so starting off with multiple thin layers of Temple Guard blue mixed in with Lamin Medium was the perfect choice. I started on the corners, and I painted them coming down at an angle with the same mix as before, but this time I added in a little Cantor blue. I did multiple layers of this with each time adding less to the middle and more towards the edge area. This will give it a gradient look, and this is the hardest part about doing this, that it takes time and constant back and forth until you step back and realise that it's starting to work. You won't get this on every power weapon, but I wanted to add a shade onto the golden parts of the weapon. So I added the same mixture along the recesses of the gold and silver, but I had some extra lamin medium as not to make it stand out too much. 
After a lot of back and forth, I was happy with how the blade was looking, and this is probably the longest part of the model that I've done yet. But there was one final part to add, and it was to go back to the Temple Guard Blue and add a little Corax White into the mix. And I started adding thin lines right in the centre of the blade's edge. Then I used the same paint to edge the highlight all around the axe. The final part was to add little dots of white scar on the corner points. Then we come to the final part of the librarian, the magical glow that's on his armour. I knew that I was going to have to do this as simple as possible, because it's such a small area to paint, it's easy to overdo it. It was an obvious choice to go back to Temple Guard Blue again to tie it in with the axe, and it's roughly a 50-50 mix of Temple Guard Blue and Lamin Medium, and it really helps the paint to flow through the lines. The downside is that it would be this thin, that when it dries out you need to go over it all again. But the good thing is that it's so thin that the cleanup is pretty easy after. With the Temple Guard blue still wet on my wet palette, I used some of it to add the glowing effect onto his eyes. The last thing to do now is to highlight the blue armour, and I did that with Carl Guard blue and highlighted all his edges. All that was left to do now was the tearing parts. And I never painted the Tyranids before, I've never really been interested in them a whole lot, but I have the Leviathan Tyranids to paint up soon, so I knew whatever colours I picked for these little ripper guys, that's the colours I was going to be using on them. To match the desert style bases, I knew I wanted them to be bright looking, and for ages I've been wanting to paint some models with mostly contrast paints, so I used this as my opportunity. I based them with Corax White, and I picked Ayandan Yellow for the body, and I didn't add any lamb and Medium in, I wanted to see how it turns out with just pure contrast on it. For their armour, I went to Griffhound Orange on it. With the contrast dry and looking good, I used Screaming Skull to highlight the parts on the skin and teeth. For the claws, I was a bit unsure what colour to do, but in the end I ended up using Corvus Black. Then I gave the orange tongue a base of Flayed One Flesh, and then shaded it with Gulliman Flesh, and I also added it to the eyes to make them stand out a bit more. To finish everything off then, I gave the claws a shade of Nullin Oil and then dry brushed them with Dawnstone. I've never been too pushed on librarian models, and even with the tricky parts like the axe and the armour glow, I really enjoyed painting this guy. And I'm super happy how the two Tyranid guys turned out with the contrast paints, and I can't wait to see what the rest of them are going to look like with it. With the Surviving Marines finished up, next is the rescue team. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and once again, thanks for watching.